Well, he might be enjoying the Florida sunshine on a working vacation, but President Trump has not stopped tweeting up a storm. Did you think he would? The president aiming his latest tweet at China after U.S. spy satellites caught China illegally selling oil to North Korea. This is what the president said. There will never be a friendly solution to the North Korea problem if this continues to happen. So we ask, what can we expect from the Trump administration's foreign policy agenda in 2018? We bring in Foundation for Defense of Democracy's founder and president, Cliff May. Hi there, Cliff. Hi, Lauren. Good to be with you. Do you agree with the president that there's never going to be a solution to North Korea? Uh, there is not going to be a solution, a friendly solution to North Korea unless the Chinese begin to cooperate with us. They're not doing so, so long as they think this is an American problem. Our goal is to make the North Korea into a Chinese problem. If it's a Chinese problem, the Chinese will be interested in solving it. That's going to take more sanctions, not just in North Korea, but probably on China as well. And the president is right to be disappointed, and he's right to send what amounts to a friendly warning to the Chinese that if you're not going to help us, you're not going to, you're not going to like the solutions we come up with. Well, what are those solutions? And quite honestly, Cliff, what else is left to sanction? Oh, no, there's a lot left to sanction. Okay. People, people think that uh, North Korea is the most sanctioned country in the world. It's not even close to it. Hmm. It, it. We haven't had the kind of sanctions that at one point brought Iran to the table. Those sanctions were lifted in exchange for an interim agreement, and I think that was a mistake. But, no, there's still a lot of sanctions to do, and it takes a while for the sanctions to have the impact. At the end of the day, Kim Jong-un needs to feel that my economy, whatever's left of it, is going to be imploding. Yeah. if I don't make a deal with the Americans. We have not gotten to, that, gotten to that point yet. Now, he may say, because he may not be rational, let the economy implode. As long as I have nuclear weapons and ways to deliver them to American cities, I don't care. And in that case, we do have to be considering, and I guarantee you the Pentagon is looking at various military uh, approaches to this problem. That should be the last resort, and it will be the last resort. But the economic weapons have not been exhausted yet. And again, those economic weapons need to be applied not just to North Korea, but also to China, that China must recognize mm -hmm. we're not going to have normal relations, the kind of relations you want, the kind that benefit you, if you continue to let your pit bull uh, out, of the, out, of, out of your yard. Yeah, and the fear is that there could be chemical agents on those nuclear weapons. I, I want to move on to Russia for a second. The whole narrative since the election has been Russia, Russia, Russian. <coughs> How has the, um, excuse me. Cliff, how is the Trump administration, how is the Trump campaign colluded with Russia? So far, we have no evidence, but we do have a Washington Post report essentially saying that um, for years, previous administration ignored all the warnings about Russia. What do you make of that? Well, it, it's, I think that's, that's true. Uh, Vladimir Putin uh, was somebody that President Bush looked in his eyes and he thought he saw a good man, and that was incorrect. President Obama thought we could reset relations that actually had lots of commonalities, that it was just the, the problem was Bush, not Putin, and the, the idea of resetting relations was a total failure. Uh, people need to understand who Putin is. He's not friendly to the United States. He's not friendly to NATO. He feels that the, uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union was the greatest tragedy of the 20th century. And his goal, and he believes the goal of any Russian leader or ruler, commissar mm -hmm. or czar, is to expand of the Russian Empire. He is attempting to reconstitute a Russian Empire. And, he, and by the way, he is succeeding at what he is attempting to do in Georgia, in Ukraine, in right. the Middle East, all of that. He is still succeeding. But I think there's a more realistic attitude as, as witness the, uh, the transfer of lethal weapons to the Ukrainians now by this administration. Um, Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State, brought all of this up in a New York Times op-ed, writing, the United States today has a poor relationship with a resurgent Russia that has invaded its neighbors, Georgia and Ukraine, and undermined the sovereignty of Western nations by meddling in our elections. Uh, so what is our Russia policy for 2018? We heard last week the national security address by President Trump. How do we approach Russia in the new year? Because in March, they have their elections, too. Yeah, and, we, and I don't think there was a great, great deal of, of, of mystery about how those elections come out. Look, if you look at the national security strategy that came out of the administration last week, it's a very serious document. Uh, unlike the, the 2015 Obama national security strategy, which said, well, we're for denuclearization of the uh, Korean Peninsula, 
but did nothing whatsoever as the, the North Koreans were building nuclear weapons, probably 60 by now, nothing as they're advancing a missile program. It said we've got rogue regimes in Iran, rogue regimes in North Korea, we've got revisionist regimes in Russia, revisionist in China. We have to approach these seriously and understand there is a real threat. We can't simply rely on the arc of history bending toward justice. The arc of history is going to be bent by these t tyrants unless we grab it and bend it ourselves. It's a good document, and it's going to be a very challenging year ahead. In fact, we've got a lot of challenging times ahead. But this, at least the national security strategy of the Trump administration, recognizes the threats and challenges we face and says we're going to do something about them, not as did the Obama uh, national security strategy, say our biggest threat is climate change, mentioning at 13 times as the major national security threat. That's really not the case. And Obama had mentioned human rights abuses, the list goes on, but this President Cliff saying America first and we're going to react to these threats to our prosperity in the new year. Cliff May, good to see you. Thank you.